Hello, welcome to another episode of Bug Bounty Report Explained. Today I will show you how Franz Rosen broke shared Apple shortcuts by exploiting improper access control bug. If you stay until the end, you will also see why he got the bounty of $28,000 despite violating Apple bug bounty rules. Link to the original report is in the description. Enjoy! Unlike other tools out there, Detectify does both asset discovery by, for example, crawling your DNS, and then it also does vulnerability scanning. Of course, it can do simple things from OWASP Top 10 like course misconfiguration or check vulnerable versions, but the cool part is they are working with a private community of ethical hackers who submit payloads or POCs with automatable web vulnerabilities. After the review, Detectify runs the attack on all their customers and every time there is a hit, the hacker gets a bounty. So if you are a defender and you want to protect your apps, check out free two-week trial at detectify.com slash BBRE. And remember, go hack yourself. Apple Shortcuts is a platform that allows you automating stuff on your iPhone. For example, I use it for my morning automation where it asks me for my weight, if I ate supplements, and so on, and then communicates with APIs to insert data into spreadsheets or mark to do tasks as done. In my case, it's mostly iPhone to server communication, but there are tons of interactions that can be done between different apps on your phone. And your shortcuts are stored using Apple's Cloud Kit. It's a cloud database storage that allows many apps to save the user's data and authenticate directly from the phone using Apple's single sign-on. And this data is stored inside containers. Apple Shortcuts used com.apple.shortcutscontainer. Inside, you have three different databases. Private, to which only the owner has access. Shared, which can be, well, shared with other users and public, to which everyone has access. Normally, your shortcuts are stored in the private database and you must authenticate as yourself to access them. Shortcuts can be very complex. To make things easier, you don't need to create all of them from scratch. There is a whole ecosystem of sharing them. You can find and use shortcuts created by others on websites like Routine Hub. Some of them include thousands of steps. Maybe you would think that shared CloudKit database sounds like a perfect fit for that. But apparently it wasn't. When you want to share your shortcut, a new record with type shared shortcut is created in the public database. It gets a GUID and a link which you can use to send it to other people. You must know that this is the third vulnerability that Franz found and described in the blog post. Others allowed modifying the data on iCrowd website and deleting articles from Apple News. So he had some ideas on how to work with CloudKit. It's important because it's not always easy to query the CloudKit database. For example, the Notes app would communicate with the CloudKit using a request that looks like this. While the request from the developer portal looked more like this. Apple Shortcuts, on the other hand, talked to gateway.icloud.com using protobuf messages, which made it significantly harder to fiddle. However, it was possible to connect to the Shortcuts container by talking to the endpoint originally used by the developer portal. What you needed to do is modifying the container name in the request. This way, it was possible to communicate with the shortcuts container using simple JSON bodies. The obvious and very impactful attacks that come to mind are adding, modifying or deleting other users' shortcuts. However, access control was properly enforced on all those scenarios. And one more thing you need to know about CloudKit are zones. Public and shared databases can only use the default zone, but in private one, you can create new zones to group related objects together. 
At least that's what the documentation says. But it turned out that the public database in Shortcast Container did use more than that. It also had metadata zone. It was even possible to add new zones to the database, but there was no impact to this as your zone wouldn't be used by anyone. You could also delete the zone you created, but only when authenticated as the same user. It hinted that access control is properly enforced on those zones. But anyway, Franz wanted to test if it was also possible to delete the metadata zone. There was no other way to test this other than try to delete it. But he got an error saying user updates to system zones are not allowed which was the next hint that access control is properly enforced here. But anyway, he tried to delete the default zone as well. It was the last idea he had for testing this functionality. And this time, it worked. Or it didn't? Listing zones still returned the default zone like nothing was changed. So he started looking into other functionalities. But he realized that one of his shared shortcuts was gone. So did the shortcut gallery. Shortcut sharing website as well. Turned out that all of the shared shortcuts were deleted. Only those shared after the deletion were working. My guess is that the new default zone was created just after the previous one was deleted, hence it was present in the zone listing response. It was that much more problematic because Apple couldn't just restore shortcuts from that moment because the new ones would be then removed. They had to merge the old ones with the new ones which took a few days. Obviously, this is something you never want to see when bug hunting. Franz wrote an email to Apple a few minutes later explaining what happened. Later, he followed up clarifying the steps he took to prevent any service interruption and tried to explain how limited he was to confirm if the deletion call had worked or not. Thanks to that, he got the bounty of $28,000 for this vulnerability. This shows that even if you go a little too far with your testing, you can still get a reward if you justify that you did what you could to avoid that. Thank you for watching this episode. I wish your bugs will never cause such problems. If you enjoyed this video, you may also like this one about 50k remote code execution in Apple Bug Bounty program. For now, thank you for watching and goodbye.